Today's topic, orthomolecular medicine. Welcome to this channel. I am Dr. Steven de Vos, the lifting dermatologist, and this is my partner, Danny Bossa. If you want to learn more about the most cutting edge science-based information in the world of hormone optimization, please like and subscribe. I also invite you to join my other YouTube channel, The Lifting Dermatologist. The link you can find in the description of this video. Hello everyone, welcome to the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. I'm Danny Bossa, joined today with Dr. Jeffrey Rutterbush. How are you doing, Jeff? Fine, Danny. Good morning to you also. Great. Today's topic, orthomolecular medicine. It's a term I've never heard about. Um, I don't ever admit to knowing everything. I get to learn stuff every day. Uh, we got uh, Ruth Rutterbush uh, right behind. Hey, Ruth, again. She's always trying to get the attention. And it gets some of the dog toys out of here. <laughs> so this is a term that uh, Jeff brought up to me and wanted to talk about it, and I'm always uh, all ears and eager to learn about new stuff. So, Jeff, tell us what orthomolecular medicine is. All right. Good morning, guys, on this, this podcast. Um, during some of my other podcasts and some of my inputs, on the, um, you know, on the Facebook feed, uh, I mentioned the word orthomolecular. So let's talk about it a little bit. By definition, ortho means correct. So we talk about correct molecule. So using, you know, God-given whole substances, vitamins and minerals in particular, to heal the body. Because within our own physiology, God gave us a whole pharmacopoeia to heal ourselves. And so if you compare the word orthomolecular, which means correct molecule, um, in the correct proportion, and you contrast it to today's modern medicine, which talks in molecular, everything synthetic, every pharmaceutical drug is actually seen by the body as being foreign. So it's considered because it has to be metabolized and they're metabolites. And by definition, all synthetic chemicals, drugs, block symptoms. They disable the body. They will mask symptoms by blocking normal physiological or biochemical process. Contrary, however, orthomolecular substances always will enable the body by enhancing physiological or biochemical process, processes in the body to reach optimum health. So the term was coined by Dr. Linus Pauling back in 1968. And just to give you a brief intro, Dr. Linus, Linus Pauling is the only two-time um, Nobel laureate winner. Um, and that's by himself, individual. He didn't share it with anybody. That's very unusual, not once but twice, individually. And, you know, to give a little background, is, you know, his, both his parents died very young in their early to mid-40s of chronic disease. He, however, because he was such a big proponent of vitamins and minerals and orthomolecular mass and lived to be, say, I think it was 93, 94, before he perished. So he was not a product of his genetic in, uh, inheritance. He lived twice as long, more than twice as long as his parents, by simply doing what he preached. Um, so I wanted to get involved with orthomolecular mass, and, and I was telling Danny before he came on that basically it's an older term that's now morphed into what we know as nutritional mass, otherwise known as this word functional mass. And by now, many of you have probably heard of functional mass, and, and again, they're interchangeable. Functional medicine is nutritional medicine. So I want to let you all know that I went into this field like, okay, let me back up a little. I became a physician because I thought that by doing so, I could help people get and stay healthy. But as I went through medical school, training, uh, undergraduate, grad, postgraduate, residency, even as a staff physician, I noticed that many of the people I saw weren't healthy. 
but yet many were on different drugs. So I'm thinking to myself, if these drugs are to help people get well, that's why they're prescribed, then why are these people so sick? And the sickest people I saw were on the most drugs. So I thought, if these drugs are the doctor's pharmacopoeia today for wellness and health, then why are so many people sick and in the hospital? So I thought, uh, let's look into this a little further. And then as to my training, I thought uh, I saw something that said the doctor of the future will uh, prescribe no medicines, but rather interest the patient uh, in, in uh, health and wellness. That was in 1900 by uh, uh, Thomas Edison. And then to my readings, I came across the, the phrase that somebody said, the uh, doctor of today better be ready to be the nutritionist of tomorrow, or else the nutritionist of today will be the doctor of tomorrow. So, and then over the years, I became a bit of a medical heretic because I saw so many physicians who most of them were not healthy, prescribing more and more medicines to many patients who weren't getting better. They were getting sicker. And as they became more sick, they required more and more medicines. And then it dawned on me this polypharmacy was not helping anybody. So I look at the medication list and I see that, oh, let's say, say a patient's on 10 medicines. I saw that the last half of the five of the last medicines were simply to counteract the symptoms caused by the first five. So I got away from conventional medicine and, and, and did the only sports and exercise preventive medicine program in the country. Um, I think I've said this before. Um, but then even during that program, we got us, uh, one or two courses in, in, in nutrition. Uh, most of it was on environmental pollutants. Um, had, to learn, had to memorize a vaccine list. And that's a whole other topic we'll get into. We could get into. I'm not, again, I'm not an anti-vector. I'm just pro-informed consent. So as I went to med school and I was told when I graduated, congratulations, young doctor. Now, here, here's, your, here's your challenge. Half of what you learned in medical school is not true. It's just your job to figure out which half that was. So as I progressed through, through my practice of 40 years, you know, we learned in medical school about this anatomy and physiology and biochemistry. We learned about enzymatic processes, the Krebs cycle. We see all the minerals and vitamins required for certain steps along the way. But we got one course in nutrition, and then also we got into this course called pharmacology, where instantly everybody dumped everything they learned about nutrition and biochemistry and physiology. Now everybody's interested in learning drugs to match certain symptoms to which drug. So it became monkey medicine. And so the further along I got, the more of a medical heretic I became. So that's why I'm practicing preventive medicine, just trying to prevent disease. So now that you know what orthomolecular mass truly is, let's go into some detail. There's a book it's called the Orthomolecular Treatment of Chronic Disease. This is the Bible, so to say, of orthomolecular physicians. But I want to read some facts to you. And again, forgive me, I'm going to look down and look at the stats because I don't memorize minutia. Um, but most people here don't realize that the number one killer or, or number one cause of death and injury in the United States is not cancer, not cardiovascular disease, thinking, but it's actually the American medical system. And what I mean by that is that there was a study done 
they looked at all the iatrogenic deaths. Iatrogenic means doctor caused um, in the United States alone. And I think this includes Canada as North American. But when they talk North American and Texas, they usually talk about Canada and, and uh, the USA. They don't usually talk about Mexico. But um, they calculated in this textbook of orthomolecular mass and that approximately 783,936 deaths are caused every year in North America due to iatrogenic reasons, doctor-caused reasons. Now, putting this, putting this into perspective, cardiovascular disease kills about 699,000. So again, 783 is greater than 699. Cancer causes about 553,000 deaths. So if you look at those numbers, you see that the American medical system is the biggest killer of, of uh, people in the North America. Now, to put that number into perspective, that's over five jumbo jet crashes per day. Hmm. Per day. Now, you don't hear about this because if you were... The American Medical Association, the big pharma work, make this public. He's up in arms. They don't want you to know that the uh, American medical system is the number one reason of, of uh, deaths in the North America. Now, they also computed or calculated that the potential minimum number of patients harmed by prescription drugs. This is the minimum is over 400,000 per year. Big, big numbers. Now, many of us here on, on the news, uh, news stations, magazines, about uh, negative reports about vitamin and minerals. I always hear negative reports. Now, remember, that in mind, media is an extension of, uh, well, big pharmacy, I'm sorry, has a big part to do uh, what the media uh, but let's look at some facts that have not been widely publicized um, by the news media. All right. I want you to remember this. This is a big fact. The heart attacks, all right? I'm sorry, back up. 8%, 8% of a North American could be saved each year, 8%, by simply consuming an inexpensive multi Now, 8% might not sound like it, but if you're one of those 8% that, that dies that year, I mean, that could impact you. And that is just an inexpensive multi inexpensive, like a one a day or a symptom. Um, so, you think about it, a more expensive, you know, better quality multi-life can save a lot more lives. Um, now, that study I just mentioned about how much good just a simple, inexpensive multi-life could do was published by JAMA. JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association in 2012. But how much of us, how many of us know about that? A simple multivitamin can save your life. 8% fewer deaths could occur per year in North America just by going on a simple, inexpensive multivitamin. Um, also, there was a study done that about three-fourths, 75% of all physicians and nurses take a multivitamin. So if Three-fourths of doctors and nurses are on a good multivitamin. That should tell you something right there. Now, that's, that was published by the Journal of Nutrition in 2009. So if you know that the most educated people in healthcare are doing a good multivitamin, then you should. Um, some other statistics. Higher doses of vitamin B6, methionine, and folate are associated with a 50% reduction in lung cancer. Now, remember, association does not prove causation. 
but there's a definite link there. So if you just take B6, methionine, and folate. Now, whenever I say this, I'm always, the baseline should always be a multivitamin. So this should be, in my opinion, you know, always in addition to a good multivitamin as your foundation. So again, B6, methionine, folate are associated with a 50% reduction in lung cancer risk. JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association, 2010. These are highly, highly revered, medically peer-reviewed journals. Um, vitamin D can cut cancer rates by 77%. Vitamin D can cut cancer rates by 77%. That's Pretty amazing. Deep. It is amazing. They're not done with vitamin D. Uh, for, it can reduce falls in the elderly by 50%. A lot of people don't know that uh, falling down as you age is a significant risk of morbidity. Uh, so again, now I'm talking, when I'm talking about vitamin D, I'm talking optimized vitamin D. Okay. So again, it reduced falls in the elderly by 50%. It can prevent 88% of type 1 diabetes in children and adolescents. All right? 88% reduction in type 1 diabetics if a child or adolescent gets on orthomolecular mass and takes a good multivitamin and other minerals and vitamins uh, that will optimize their health. And it restores cure rates of antibiotics to 100%. In other words, vitamin D is such a powerful immune modulator that if you take, you optimize your vitamin D along with an antibiotic you're taking, that can improve the efficacy of that antibiotic by 100%. Hmm. Significant facts here. Um, also, uh, orthomolecular medicine, you know, vitamins and minerals is optimized, can reduce the risk of heart failure by taking only 500 mg a day of vitamin C. So if you only take 500 milligrams of vitamin C, just 500 milligrams. Now remember the RDA is I think 90. RDA recommended daily allowances really stands for really deficient amount. Okay. RDA, really deficient. So if you just do a half a gram of vitamin C per day, you can have reduced the risk of heart failure uh, significantly. And that came out of the American Heart Journal, 2011. There's a clinic in Wichita, Kansas, known as the Reardon Clinic, Dr. Reardon. And he's been giving IV uh, ascorbate, which is vitamin C, for many, many uh, years now as a cancer chemotherapeutic agent and a biological response modifier to cure cancer. So there's a clinic that's been doing the IV nutritional therapies, vitamin C in particular, to cure cancers now. How, much, how, many, how many of us have heard about this clinic, the Reardon Clinic? Now, they're actually doing a study. You know, this, this whole scare now about, uh, what's that, or the coronavirus. Uh, they're actually, uh, in the uh, Chinese and Japanese, are putting together the best scientists now, looking at IV vitamin C at 24,000 milligrams a day to cure coronavirus. Hmm. Have you heard about this study? No. No, no. no. Uh, let's see, some more interesting stats or significant uh, figures. Vitamin E. Now, when I see vitamin E, that's, there's eight vitamin E's. I'm sorry. Eight. Eight. Um, natural vitamin E consists of four tocopherols and four tocotrienol. So if you're going to get a good vitamin E, it's got to be natural vitamin E. Now, it's hard to get a vitamin E that's got all eight. You, you can find some that has all natural tocopherols, but you usually have to find a different product that has tocotrienol. Anyhow, back to vitamin E. Natural vitamin E yields a 75% decrease in prostate cancer for me, natural vitamin E will diminish uh, up to 75% prostate cancer from forming. Again, International Journal of Cancer, 2010. 
2011. Only 300 IUs of vitamin E per day reduced lung cancer rates by 61%. Incredible. Only 300 IUs per day reduced lung cancer by 61%. International Journal of Cancer, 2008. These are highly respected journals. Um, four, four to 800 IUs per day can decrease the risk of a heart attack by 77%. That's the Lancet Journal. That's the that's the Great Britain's premier uh, research article on on uh, medicine. The Lancet, 1996, 1996. The Lancet came out and said, if you eight uh, four to eight hundred IUs of natural vitamin E per day, you can do, uh, reduce your risk of a heart attack by seventy seven percent. These facts should be well known by everyone, but they're not. Um, uh, 800 IUs per day uh, of vitamin E and is, is a treatment for fatty liver disease. Now, fatty liver disease is becoming very common, especially for people who are obese or metabolic syndrome. Um, it leads to um, usually uh, insulin resistance. But that's a statistic put out by the New England Journal of Medicine, 2010. Vitamin E can help cure fatty liver disease. Uh, Alzheimer's uh, patients who take 2,000 IUs per day, again, vitamin E, um, no longer use, oh, issues no longer, okay, per day. So 2,000 IUs per day of vitamin E can really, can have, I'm sorry, I don't, they live longer. Let me, Alzheimer's patients can be difficult because it's the long goodbye. An average diagnosis, I mean, duration of, of life, once you've been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it's about eight years. Some people a little longer. Some people you know, don't live as long. But you can protract an Alzheimer's uh, disease patient's life significantly by years by simply giving them 2,000 IUs per day. Again, the Journal, the journal of Clinical Nutrition, 2,000. So these statistics are well known. They've been out there for some, uh, sometimes decades by established peer-reviewed journals. But how was not common knowledge? Because big pharmacy isn't putting this out. And big pharmacy pays with all the ads on TV that you see. But guess what? There are drugs. There's no money in natural cure. There's no money in vitamins and minerals. That's why you don't hear about it. Now, um, before this, this, I'm just going to show some, some titles of books that are out there. Uh, I'm not going to bore you to death, but Dr. Ray Strand came out with a couple of books about 20 years ago, 15 to 20 years ago. One is, what your doctor doesn't know about nutritional medicine may be killing you. The doctors are terribly, terribly trained in nutrition. I'll see him on the book, Death by Prescription. Death by Prescription. Um, well, that's the yeah. one thing that a lot of doctors tell me that they learn in medical school is, you see this issue, you prescribe this. You see that issue, you prescribe this. It's basically, what are you observing? And then we're going to teach you what medication to, to uh, prescribe. And they all tell me the same thing. Well, you're right. Uh, uh, you're right, but see, then there's no thought process to that. Why go through two years of all the anatomy, physiology, and, uh, and biochemistry, and nutrition, and not apply it? And I'll tell you why, because who funds medical schools? Pharmaceutical companies. All right, they do. That's why they emphasize so much on dumping everything you learn the first two years and applying all that pharmacology. Um, Dr. Carolyn Dean, very educated naturopath and medical doctor. She a book by Death by Modern Medicine. Uh, one of the uh, chief editor at uh, JAMA, uh, Dr. John Abramson, wrote a book that said Overdosed in America. Uh, oh, yeah, Generation Prescription. Um, we have all these books. Uh, this is just a fraction of the one. I just brought out some. Comfortably, comfortably numb. 
we take our medicines to become, this is many psychiatric medicines, and then doctors and hospitals on the take, on the take, being paid big money to only use medicine versus even thinking and talking about nutrition. Now, in most doctors' defense, we're not trained. You kind of, if you want to apply this stuff like I've had to, I've had to learn all of this on my own, way beyond medical. You don't learn enough to apply it. If I can recommend one great book on vitamin D, of all the vitamins, my, well, besides vitamin C, um, but my favorite is vitamin D. Vitamin D, as you know, is not a, it's not a vitamin. It's a pro-hormone. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's a book called Know Your D by Dr. Craig Keebler. So I want to stress that book because people always ask me, we have some talks on our forum about, hey, what's the proper amount of vitamin D? How should I take? Let me, if you go outside in a bright sunny day for 20 minutes, high noon, with your bathing suit on, you're exposing a lot of your skin. 20 minutes. You're going to be getting about 10,000 international units of vitamin D. Now, God's great wisdom, if 10,000 IUs of vitamin D was too much, I don't, I think we'd be, I mean, the people who were exposed a lot to near the equator to a lot of sunlight will be dropping dead. Um, some people like, like, um, uh, formulas. So I'm always asked a lot, either on the on the podcast or on the on the websites. Patients ask me, "What, Doc? How much vitamin D should I take?" Well, if you want your vitamin D optimized between 55 and 90, 55 and 90. Oh, by the way, for your thyroid to function optimally, it's got to be above 70. Hear me again. For your thyroid to run. No, other, than, other than other things, but you have to have vitamin D above 70 for your thyroid, at least uh, the function contributing by vitamin D has to be above 70. So you can take 5,000 to, uh, to 10,000 IUs as long as you really want to, or as long as you want to. Now, again, it's a hormone, so if you're going to be taking it for a while, we discussed this, vitamin K2 needs to be taken with it. And you need to have it checked once in a while, like anything else, have it. But for those of people that, you know, there's, that like formulas, I give you a simple formula. You can memorize it. Easy. That's it. So I just memorized it before I came on this podcast. If I can memorize it, you can. Simple. If you're, and I just told you, you to be uh, really healthy, your vitamin D has to be above 70. So if you go to your doctor and he says, hey, your vitamin D is 30, you're in a normal range, mm -hmm. remember this. If you want it at 70 and you're at 30, what's 70 minus 30? 40. You take that difference and multiply it by 1,000. So 40 divided by 1,000 is 4,000. So you can safely take 4,000 IUs a day. So your you take your deficit from the optimum and multiply by 100, and you get to a general range with which you can supplement vitamin D. Now, okay, that's simple math. Your optimum should be above 70. Take what you're at, subtract the two, take that difference, and multiply by 100. That's the amount of IUs you can take safely. Um, but again, some people don't like math. I just say you take between 5,000 and 10,000 IUs a day. But like anything else, you want it checked, okay? And you also, if you're checking calcium with it, um, let's see. And There's, the K2 is, is essential, I've been told many by many people, because supplementing with D will actually cause, uh, could, could cause a deficiency in K, so you want to add that yeah. K. Yeah, okay. um, D is important for, uh, for uh, calcium metabolism. But D is not very smart. D will guide uh, the calcium everywhere in your body. Um, so, like D is, is the calcium bus, but K, but calcium is like the like the, the driver. Calcium will take that. I um, mean, sorry, vitamin D with K two 
will take that calcium and deposit it in the right tissue. You don't want calcium deposit, you know, building up in your soft tissue. Mm-hmm. No, you want it in your bones and your teeth. So K2 helps guide the calcium into the appropriate tissue. That's why you need, you need K2. Um, there's a simple book uh, for those of people that are interested in orthomolecular medicine. It's just orthomolecular nutrition for everyone, for everyone. Simple, you know, the KISS principle, written by Helen Saul Case, her dad's, uh, they're both uh, orthomolecular, uh, orthomolecular physicians. So there's a simple, simple tools to go by. Um, so I think that's all I have to say about the importance of, of vitamin and mineral therapy. Um, again, vitamin D is a pro-hormone, so if you're going to take it, you've got to have it you know, measured. I gave you some simple guidelines on how to dose it with K2 to be safe. <laughs> vitamin C, uh, I take three to five grams every day. Now, gram, that's 1,000 milligrams. Now, remember, the, the uh, RDA, I believe, is 90 uh, uh, milligrams. So it's highly deficient in optimizing your levels. Uh, again, you know, there's so many nutrients out there that if optimized can give you uh, greater uh, life, uh, longevity. Uh, I'm a big proponent of magnesium. We learned in med school that magnesium is involved in so many different enzymatic processes. In fact, Dr. Carolyn Dean the uh, MD naturopath has written books just on magnesium. And she's already identified over a thousand different biochemical processes, enzymatic processes that magnesium partakes in. And she's found that 80 to 90% of Americans in particular are grotesquely deficient in magnesium. All right. So that's some of my favorite nutritional supplements, uh, vitamin C, magnesium, uh, vitamin D in particular, um, these things have done correctly won't harm you, all right? And, you don't, and again, you don't hear about these because they're not funded by big, big pharmacies. And that's it's really a shame that um, you could hear, we could do so much good um, just by taking a simple, simple, inexpensive multi. But again, like anything else, I put the cheapest multivitamin in your system. It's like going, it's like driving a Corvette or a Ferrari and pull up putting a regular gas in it. So it's the cheapest form of health insurance you can possibly have. A good multivitamin. Then you go from there. Everything that you take, nutritionally speaking, should be on top of what? A good diet and a multivitamin, uh, sorry, multivitamin for a foundation. Then I take additional C and D. I take high potency v, uh, uh, B and, of course, E. You can take up to 3,200 IUs of vitamin E a day safely, up to 3,200 IUs. Remember the, the, the uh, study I cited that your know, usual good dose, safe dose is four to 800 IUs? There have been studies done, the long-term people taking 3,200 IUs of vitamin E a day. No detriment, none. All right. So let me ask you, um, Jeff. Um, before everybody just rushes out to their, you know, yeah. local corner store and like, oh, here's a multivitamin made yeah. by whatever. Yeah. Um, I have read a lot of different, I guess, different perspectives on this. That a lot of these cheaper multivitamins and stuff, they're not particularly bioavailable. And a lot of people are just downing these things every day and getting very little benefit. Would you agree with that? Or, you know, yeah. would you say that, you know, invest in something maybe a little bit higher quality, uh, something that's a little bit more bioavailable than maybe these, the cheap stuff you see at your, your local pharmacy might not really be the best fit for this purpose? Yeah, there's no adage that you are what you eat. That's not quite true. You are what you absorb. Uh, and Danny had a good point. Have to get a good multivitamin. I actually know, uh, uh, you know, my seven plus decades on this earth. That means I'm mid sixty, not seventy. Just saying, I've been around. I've met people that have worked in, well, you know, the water sewage places, um, and they will tell me nightmare stories about how they have to go into 
the filter system of these water filtration, water processing plants, and actually scoop out shovelfuls of undigested or partially digested. And the one they always see the most is centrum. They say, I'm tired of digging out, you know, half digested, partially digested centrum pellets that are plugging up these filters. So my point is, remember the study, just an inexpensive vitamin can uh, decrease mortality and morbidity by 8% in North America. 8%. Um, as a matter of fact, it can probably prevent, uh, like I said, the, the, the uh, 8%. 8% is significant. That's about 48,000 lives. 48,000 lives can be saved every year in North America by just adding an inexpensive multivite. 48,000. May not seem like a lot, but you might be one of those 48,000. Danny had a good point about the quality of your multivite. The nutraceutical industry is not highly regulated. It is regulated, but not highly regulated. But yes, you get what you pay for. Uh, don't cut corners on your supplements. Um, I always recommend a pharmacy grade uh, nutrient supplement. So where do you get those? Well, there's Douglas Labs. There's uh, Science for Health. Um, these are usually sold only through doctor's offices because many times these companies only want the doctor's name out front. It legitimizes the quality of their product if they sell only to doctor's offices. But I can tell you in my travels uh, that, and I'm Danny, you tell me if you have these products up there in, in Canada, okay? Um, <laughs> uh, Solgar. I've heard of it, yeah. S-O-L-G-A-R. Um, now, N O W. Uh, Jarrow, J A R R O W. Uh, Source Naturals. Source Natural. Are maybe. these known as good brands? Yes, then? yes. Okay, well, okay, yes. These are brands that you can go into uh, a GNC. Now, I don't, I don't recommend going to GNC because I've gone to GNCs even when they have sales and they're top dollar. But you can go to a super Walmart that carries. Uh, on uh, supplements like Jarrow or like Solgar, or like Source Naturals, like Now. These are good branded supplements. And because, how do I know? Because I've done studies on them. I've evaluated, I've taken some of their products and had them evaluated. I've talked to people that actually are biochemists, look at the uh, uh, some of the product lines uh, produced by those four I mentioned, Solgar, Source Naturals, Jarrow now and say that they're as far as over the counter, probably the best you can get. Okay. The All right. Gotcha. Um, so multivitamin, you said vitamin B6, vitamin D, vitamin E. Um, yeah. Methionine, folate, these the, are all coming together. But, but again, you just <laughs> good question, Danny. B, the B vitamins are involved in metabolizing, metabolism. So they're the energy vitamins. They give you energy, okay? So, but, but God gives us B vitamins in a complex. So they have to be in harmony. Mm -hmm. So a good orthomolecular physician, a functional doctor, usually recommends a high-potency B complex. The B complex has what you need in complex. They're complex together for best action. Then if you're not having a uh, resolution of symptoms or some of your numbers on functional intracellular analysis, this is a spectrocell a lab that you draw blood and takes it and they look at it and said, how, many, how much of these vitamins and minerals are in your cells? Therefore, they give you a report as to what is, is, is remiss. So um, as far as back to uh, the vitamin B6, it's a, you mentioned B6, but never, ever take the B vitamin alone. alone. Always multivite foundation, B complex, and then you can take additional B vitamin. At least you have that harmony of the complex there giving you a foundation. I mean, if that makes sense. God gave us B complex vitamins together for a reason. There's harmony there. There's disharmony. You just take a mega a doses of one alone for a long time. Gotcha. Right. 
In regards to the last question I've got, um, and you can choose to answer this or not, because I'm sure it's a, maybe a sensitive question, a sensitive thing for, for a physician to answer, but the fact that physicians in general are just saying, oh, you've got this, I'll prescribe you this, or you've got this, you know, whatever neurological condition, I'll prescribe you a, you know, antidepressant, or I'll give you this, give you that. Do you think it's primarily just because is it primarily ignorance and they're just basically doing what they were taught to do? Do you think it's primarily they're getting kickbacks from the pharmaceutical companies or do you think it's, it's primarily that they're just, they're doing this, I don't want to say with, in, with malice or, you know, maybe they just, they just don't know any better. It goes back to ignorance or maybe it's just, you know, the fact that it's like, Oh, you've got this issue. Who the hell knows what it is. It could be a million things. Just take this drug and, and, and go, I have, I, I don't have the time nor the, you know, nor the, the resources to diagnose exactly what mineral or vitamin deficiency you've got that would potentially fix this. So take this drug and, and go like, do you, do you think it's more of like a, just a sheer ignorance side or do they really know what they're doing for other purposes? It's sheer other ignorance reasons? because they don't know what. Okay. So there's no malice. It's ignorance. Doctors are always down on things they're not up on. So, they don't feel comfortable discussing nutrition or vitamins and minerals to a patient that's asking. They will say, oh, you don't need to take a vitamin. Meal. Just eat a well-balanced meal. Well, first of all, the soils have been depleted of proper minerals and vitamins for almost 200 years. Back in the day when farmers used compost, horse manure, I guess, that had all the minerals in it to replete the soil. But after World War II, when they had so much NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium left over, they started using that fertilizer only, only, only over and over and over again. So now the soils have been depleted of uh, proper nutrition uh, for many, many, many decades. So there's no such thing as getting enough nutritional value from a well-balanced meal because if the plants aren't getting the nutrition they need from the soil then we're not getting it. does that make sense okay so you made a good point danny i forgot to mention this because again there's a lot of tangents i can go off on but since the soils have been depleted for 150 to 200 years and every time they mill and turn the soil over and plant new crops becoming more and more deficient because they're only putting NPK, uh, nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, and potassium uh, back in there. Um, well, guess what? The plants aren't getting the minerals they need to ward off the pesticides and the, uh, the bugs, um, so forth. So the plants are sick. Okay. That's our sicker because there's not enough nutrients in the soil to keep them healthy. But then, well, guess what man has done? They have to use pesticides to kill many of the bugs that these plants are now subjected to because they don't have the immune system, so to speak, to ward off these diseases. So now the soils have been depleted had to use pesticides and fungicides and herbicides on the plants to help them stay healthy. They don't have the minerals necessary for so to make them flourish and give them health. So you have to have healthy soil, you have to have healthy plants, you know, that, that gives you a healthy human being. So we don't have healthy soil. Therefore, we can't get what we need from the plants. You have to take a good multivitamin as a foundation. Guess what? In 2002, 18 years ago now, a study came out in JAMA, JAMA, the Journal of American Medical Association, stating this, stating this, that given all the preponderance of evidence of nutritional deficiencies due to the soil has been depleted, JAMA said 18 years ago that everybody needs to be on a good multivitamin. But who knows that? Say so next time you, you anybody listening sees their doctor, uh, just eat a well nourished, a well balanced uh, 
a meal or a, a diet, and you don't need a supplement. Uh, well, there's, a, there's a journal, that came, an article that came out in 2012 from JAMA that said we all need to take a good month. So, but back to your point, uh, Dale, uh, Danny, a doctor simply can't know everything. And they don't get taught enough in med school to be able to discuss it. You have a doctor has to go out and learn this on their own. There's much, much more education that goes into becoming a, a, a properly practicing physician than what you learn in med school. Because remember, I said half of what we learned in med school is not true. And yet, we're supposed to believe that everything we learned in immunology and vaccinology was accurate and 100% true. They want you to think that everything we learned in that one class is accurate. Therefore, give the vaccines as per the dosing schedule because no harm. But yeah, wait a minute. Everything else we learned was half is not true, but everything we learned in immunology and vaccinology and virology was true. Again, I'm not an anti-vaxxer. It's a whole different topic. I just know, I want you to know what's in that. In that thing. That's gotcha. read, read the label. Have the doctor read the label. Hey, doctor, read the label. Do you understand? Can you explain that to me? That's just informed consent. If you're informed about what's in there, the doctor can educate you. You want to have vaccines? Great. Go for it. I'm not against vaccines. I'm against too many of them too soon in a young person. But again, it, that's a whole other topic. You know, you mentioned something about, uh, you know, vaccines being, you know, cautious. You, you label an anti-vaxxer. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. I'm about having informed consent. That's all. Guys, this is why our channel is great. Our channel is great because I sure as hell don't know everything. I know very little and I can't have a channel where it's just me just spouting whatever little bit of information I have. I find the channel is successful and doing well because we got guys like Dr. Ruderbush on and a number of other doctors on that are sharing all kinds of stuff. And as many times I'm going to have them on, I'm still not going to learn everything. And I'm going to keep having more and more guys on there to come up with different angles and different strategies and different perspectives and bringing up stuff that the others don't know. And that's what makes it interesting. So here we got Dr. Ruderbush who, you know, showed us a whole bunch of good books. None of them written by him, but he says, this is a good book. Go read this. Get yourself educated. He's not trying to sell his own book. He's talking about vitamins that could potentially save your life, give you a much better standard of living, uh, extend your lifespan. Guy doesn't even sell vitamins. Here's some good brands. Go get those. This is like f absolutely free information without anyone trying to sell anything to you, which I, I find is really good. And it's just an exchange of information. Well, back up a little bit. I, I don't sell vitamins, but I do carry the Designs for Health, which is pharmacy gray. I mean, any doctor that does functional medicine and believes in IV nutritional therapies has to carry a pharmacy, pharmaceutical brand of, of, of vitamins. So I carry Designs for Health. And again, if you want to figure out how to get that, I can tell you how to get it. it just get a hold of me and I can tell you how to to Designs for Health, because you have to go through a doctor to be able to get it. It's, again, I just gave you four of the top brands that are you should get over the counter. But if you want top of the line stuff that I've done the research on for 30 years to figure out the best known to mankind and the best value to, just get a hold of me offline and I can tell you how to get that Designs for Health. Cool. Your website, www.kicksomemass.com. Dot com and there's three s's at the end long yeah that's story. not that's not a that's mistake long like story every time we try to get that and we lose it something somebody takes it because we haven't paid money to keep it i don't know what it's again it's confusing guys and i see guys and he says yeah do something about that but we're going slowly it's a word of mouth uh yeah www.picksummass with three s's dot com dot com yeah. And uh, Dr. Ruderbush is in Florida. Remind me again, where is it near Jacksonville? Uh, I'm in greater Jacksonville. It's Orange Jacksonville. Park. Jacksonville. It's in yeah, Orange Park, which is a suburb just okay. the southwest of greater Jacksonville. It's Clay okay. County's Orange Park. And you do telemedicine as well, correct? Yes, sir, I do. Okay. Anything else you want to add here, uh, Jeff? No, I could go off on vitamins and, <laughs> and minerals for a long time because I, I just really find it fascinating. Um, but I just wish other people would realize that they have to they have to take more action, but be more proactive for their health. Don't 
don't believe everything your doctor says. I'm a doctor, but they don't know everything about everything. And doctors are, like, just, like I said, always down on things they're not up on. And you can't be up on everything. I'm not. I've been practicing for 40 years. I'm still learning. That's why they call it a practice. You always practice. Never heard it put that way. It was a good point. Well, it's a practice. I mean, if you, you see a doctor that, you know, poo poos you and don't do that, that doc, doc, don't listen to them, and kind of steers you in and doesn't talk to you, answer your questions, just be wary that, uh, that doctors don't know everything. And, it, and, you know, this science is changing so fast. What's that Murphy number? Whatever a law that is said that everything's doubling knowledge every three, three and a half years. Anyhow, it's just it's growing so fast. I mean, think about it. I graduated medical school last century. I mean, what I learned is, is archaic. That's why we have to do CMEs, you know, continuing medical education. But who pays for the CMEs? Big pharmacy. I hate, I hate going to these conferences because they have drug companies out there to pay doctors to preach the significance and the health benefits of their pharmaceutical drugs. And it's I don't prescribe synthetic chemicals anymore. Well, I will, but I try not to, and I will always educate. So the word doctor, the Latin word is docere, docere. You want to repeat that last part? Your, your mic cut out there. Oh, okay. What yeah, docere okay. means? Uh, doctor, the root is Latin, docere, E-O-C-E-R-E, docere. It means to teach. The first and foremost thing doctors should do is teach people. Teach them about health and wellness. Doctors don't know about health and wellness. They only know about disease and sickness care. That's all they they learn about in it. And big pharmacy keep doctors wanting to prescribe more drugs to manage symptoms. These symptoms, write that drug. In managed care environment, you know, we had to see patients every 15, 20 minutes. You don't have time to think about this. You're, oh, give me your symptoms. Oh, here's your drug. Here's your drug. Here's your drug. Or managed care. Do you have that? Do you have that in Canada? Managed care. Um, I haven't really found it here yet. It's okay. um, here. It's you, you know you can go to the public system, which I mean. Yeah. Well, managed care. Whatever. Just, I'm sorry. Managed care just too much management, not enough care. Gotcha. All right, Jeff. Thank you for your time. As always, it's always an eye opener with you. Yeah, we'll do it again in the near future. I always got some things to talk about. I know. All right. Thanks so much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. You too. Oh, bye-bye.